What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. We got a jam-packed show for you today. Um, we got a couple of uh, pieces, a couple of pieces of content that we've been waiting for for quite some time coming out next week. Uh, we got some movie business discussions to have. Um, an update on the Flash film, a couple of DC characters that uh, Warner Brothers is trying to introduce, and we are, we are going to give you a confirmation of a rumor that's been circulating for quite some time, and we have confirmation, and you're going to hear it here first, although this is a rumor that most likely people already have a feeling that it's going to happen, but here on the Nerd Gen Report, we're going to confirm it. Um, but before we get into all of that, please, if you want to support the channel, hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share with your friends. We really do appreciate it. It does help out the channel. Brian, what's going on, man? What's not? It's calm before <laughs> the storm. And we got a lot of news in the week after one division ended and the week before a lot of things hit. So a yeah. lot going on. Yeah. Let's get into it. We've been waiting for this to happen for quite some time, and we've been waiting for this to, uh, to the unveiling of this uh, since it was announced. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Falcon and the Winter Soldier is coming to us next week. I know I'm going to get some slack for that, but I want to discuss that first. Yes, um, we got some early um, reviews out on the first episode of the show. Um, and I think people are making a, a, a mistake in comparing this show to WandaVision because obviously you and I know that WandaVision is something that we weren't expecting. This was something that they were going in um, trying to attempt for the first time and they pulled it off. Falcon and the Winter Soldier to me, and I'm sure you would agree, is a more to the norm of what we're used to seeing in Marvel great action, some comedy. Uh, what do you think about the first reactions of the Winter Soldier, Falcon and the, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and um, uh, and your excitement for the show coming out next week? This is the only show where I am rooting for more of the same. Period. Yeah. Why? Because they perfected the tone in the films. So Winter Soldier and Civil War, the tonality, the pacing, what they did with those two films, the Russo brothers, was they struck a real chord that produced, I think, you know, some of the best films that the MCU did. And then yeah. within that, they really stumbled onto this duo, unlikely chemistry between the Winter Soldier and Falcon. And so to me, this is the only show where more of the same is exactly what I'm hoping for, yeah. and the reviews would indicate that's exactly what we're going to get. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, uh, Winter Soldier, and a little bit. I'm I'm getting tired of saying Falcon and the Winter. So I'm gonna call it Falls, where the T is the T is silent. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing this man because yeah, I, we haven't seen a lot of Marvel and MCU content, and WandaVision was the first, and definitely introduced a different sort of feel to it. And this one is just going to return us uh, sort of back to what we used to seeing, which is great um, action, uh, great content all around. I think uh, so. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, well, there's such a proud tradition too in Hollywood of the buddy cop idea. Yeah, yeah. To me, this is the Marvel buddy cop, right? This is 48 hours. This is I was watching boys, that the other day. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. This is that, and so to see it in in done well in comic book form, I think is when we talk about the genres that comic books can touch. Perfect. They got this these two, and yeah. they understand that. I did have a question for you, which mm -hmm. is beyond that continuation. What do you want out of this show? Like you get to the end of episode six. What do you want to have been added to this? I want what I've always wanted and what they've accustomed me to uh, look to look forward to in each uh, and every outing that um, of movies or whatever piece of content that they put out is um, what to look forward to 
after this um, with regards to their Easter eggs, uh, expanding the universe. Uh, they, you know, those are the things that I look forward to the most. Um, obviously, um, I'd like to see where uh, Sam Wilson um, ends up after this. Also, the Winter Soldier, he has a lot of redemption to uh, to um, to do. And I'm also looking forward to seeing Baron Zemo and what he's going to do, going to do in this film. I mean, not this film, but although they say that this is like shooting a film, but I, 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 there was one, I was watching New Rock Stars and there was this one guy that asked the question, is, is Baron Zemo wearing the mask in, I guess, uh, not in memory of, but to sort of uh, play a cruel joke or, or in wearing the mask, it, it almost looks like Thanos, right? Like he's wearing the mask to, 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 to sort of uh, get in their heads, so to speak, right? Because uh, what reason would, would he have to wear the mask, right? Especially that color. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where the 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 influence comes from in wearing that mask. Well, I was excited to read in the in the reviews that we spend some time with Bucky trying to unpack his own history, and this is something that Civil War touched on. But I think it would be a disservice to this show to just pretend like it's all good. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, somebody yeah, who yeah, for yeah. fifty years was doing ill, yeah, big time around the world you would be carrying some serious demons if you woke up and kind of realized that. So I'm glad that it seems like they are going to acknowledge and explore mm -hmm. that history as he tries to break free of it. The one thing that hasn't been teased at all, Wyatt Russell as um, agent. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see what this character looks like. It's straight from the comics. We have not seen, I believe, a single shot of him in any of the mm -hmm. promotional materials. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm very excited to see what that looks like, because the rumor is he is actually the preferred government Captain America to start, even though we know that Sam is the the end game for, for this. I think it's a good idea for them to keep that sort of uh, hidden from us because he is a new character and anything that they show regarding him may not uh, affect us in any way. Uh, we may feel indifferent because we don't know him. So I guess telling us his backstory in this show, I mean, Think about this. We're getting 45 to 55 minutes of this per episode. So we mm -hmm. got a, a, a lot to, to, you know, it's not the the same old sort of time frame that we were getting with WandaVision where things would end so quickly. Um, and because it was so good, it ended so, uh, you know, we thought we, we wanted more. So one almost one hour of this, we're going to get a lot, I think, a lot to explore, a lot of uh dialogue and a lot of action i'm looking forward to seeing this man but as you and i often discuss i mean if you rewatch winter soldier in particular an hour flies by i mean pick any 60 minutes of that movie and it is gone in a heartbeat yeah. and i'm expecting the pacing of this to feel like that you're gonna get yeah. to the end of the episode and be like really that was an hour you know i'm ready for the next one it almost feels it almost like when the show comes on and it ends it's almost like damn I wish we can get that option to binge it. <laughs> I'll pay twenty dollars more to binge it if they gave me that 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 option. You know, so I, yeah, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. So let us know in the comments in the comment section below what you are expecting from Falcon and the Winter Soldiers Falls um, next week. I'm sure you guys are looking forward to that. Next up. The Batman has wrapped filming. There had been some, I'm not gonna get into the details of the rumors, but there had been some rumors coming out, negative stuff, right? And, you know, thankfully, I think there was a reporter that went, that, that went to the source and sort of, you know, uh, totally threw out whatever rumors people have been hearing 
um, about the, the 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 relationship between Pattinson and and Matt Reeves and and Pattinson doing some stuff, you know, all that was, you know, false. And obviously we do know that there was some um, disagreement between Pattinson and Matt Reeves, most likely just- um, uh, There's a good and bad. The, the, the upside you hope for is this creative discovery. Like you never want, I mean- Creative you, differences, that's the word I was looking for, I mean, yes. You think about the great directors in history, like I, I talk about David Fincher a lot. It's like he puts actors through 90 takes, 100 takes. Do you think they love doing that? No, of course not. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, when you get movies like The Social Network or Seven, is anyone really complaining in retrospect? No, no. They go back and work with him again. So I look at this and I say, what you hope for is it was a discovery process for the Bruce Wayne that they wanted. Yeah. And, you know, Robert Pattinson as an actor is in a very different place than he was when he did Twilight. You know, he yeah. was a youngster that he didn't have the view mm -hmm. or the clout really to step in a room with his director at the time and say, well, this is the right choice yeah. for Edward Cullen. Whereas now, I think he has the experience, he's worked with a lot of great filmmakers to where he's gonna have a voice in yeah. the character and how it shapes up. So yeah. the reality is, you know, Matt Reeves has given us the, the sort of the Apes trilogy and, and that was outstanding, or the, yes. second, the second and the third, excuse me, and those are both outstanding films. Yeah. When he puts a foot wrong, I'll pay attention until then I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And obviously the first material we got was so incredible yeah, yeah. that you know, until we really see something concrete to make us feel like this thing is off the rails, yeah. I think we still believe that uh, we're on track for a really, really special movie. And I think the creative differences that they had on set is only, I think, only is a is a good thing that two people feel passionate about the the character to want to do it a specific way and having that discussion and make sure that they get it right. Uh, so, you know, but Batman is done. And Brian, I'm going to say it again, and I've said it to others before, and I've recorded a video a long time that I haven't put out. Me talking some big talk about what this film is going to do at the box office. Now that we're sort of gearing towards movies coming out in movie theaters, although Batman is not going to come out this year next year i would assume that we're sort of going to be back to normal that is there isn't going to be that you know you got to sit here and then skip to two seats to, you know what i'm saying it's going to be at full capacity yeah so i'm saying right now again batman is going to be the number one superhero film ever it's going to do close to two billion dollars i'm saying it again i'm saying it again Inflation is going to hit whatever that number is, <laughs> is going to, is going to be up there. Do you still believe that that, because I believe we had the discussion before and you didn't think that this was possible, but do you think it is possible that uh, people are going to go to this film, especially, you know, hopefully the reviews are, are great. You know, that's what we're, we're, we're hoping for. And judging by what we've seen so far, I, you know, I, you can't deny the anticipation and the excitement that people have to see this film. Yeah, I'm lower than you on this, just not because I'm lower than you on the film, I'm just lower than you on the global appetite for Batman. Uh, and I, I go back to the splits, domestic and global, that Chris Nolan's franchise had. And this character, for whatever reason, has always been a little bit more of a domestic character versus some of the Marvel properties, which really skewed kind of 65, 75% international. Yeah. Batman was a little more 50-50. So to mm -hmm. me, that puts this more in the Black Panther area of if it's if the reviews crush it and you have an acclaimed filmmaker with a budding star and a great cast like they have, you know, 600 million US, 700 million global, 1.3 total, that's kind of, what I think you're probably looking at. I, I, I do think that it'll be Black Panther. Okay, but I, that the, the Black Panther was similar in that it was like 700 million domestic and about 700 million global. It was about 50-50 mm -hmm, US, mm -hmm, non-US mm -hmm. to get to its number. And I, mm -hmm. I feel like Batman is going to slot in closer to that than the, I think to get to the number you want, 
it's going to have to do you know well north of a billion dollars outside the u.s alone to get that because i don't see the u.s box being like a billion dollars it's not going to challenge force awakens for you know best um single domestic uh box so that's where i'm kind of a little bit lower than you and i actually you know maybe we'll maybe we'll put a friendly wager on this i actually think shang chi is going to out global this uh yeah, that, that 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 is. Uh, I I wouldn't put a bet on that because I believe Shang Chi is going to do gangbusters at the theaters as well. Uh, but I believe if we see more trailers or another trailer for the Batman and we see more awesomeness, and again, Batman doesn't come out till next year. I think we I, see it with Suicide Squad. You think you see it with Suicide and the Suicide placement Squad, of Suicide Squad, Squad, Squad in the summer? Okay. It's perfect for a new trailer. And then you're looking at a March release next year. Then you get a final trailer at Fandome. That yeah. feels that feels about right to me. So yeah. Uh I think the the pent up for you know the anticipation to go back to the theaters and sort of go back to normal to see some and, and I think the movies that we're gonna get in the theaters are just gonna be perhaps the best, most exciting films we're gonna be seeing on a month to month basis in terms of releases when we do get these films they're going to be these blockbusters films almost every week right or every month whenever they come out so uh, i'm looking for this uh the batman to do really great numbers and i'm i'm telling you batman is going to be amazing the best batman we've ever seen the best batman we've ever seen all right, let's get into some. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section what you think about uh, our predictions or my prediction in regards to uh, the Batman and what sort of numbers this is going to do. Um, Warner Brothers and HBO Max have um, disclosed where they'd want or what numbers uh, numbers of subscribers they'd like to achieve. Uh, they're looking at about one twenty to one fifty. Uh, 150 million uh, subscribers by the end of 2025, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. That does include the legacy cable channel, but clearly the mix is going to be shifting dramatically toward the streaming service over that time, and they they explain that. Yeah, they had a uh, an um, what's it called their uh, their version of Investor Day, I guess. Yes. Um, and they seem sort of happy with the numbers so far, right? I think those numbers are going to go up a lot in the next couple of months. Despite the outrage in the manner that they went about releasing these films. I don't know, Brian, if you would agree with this, but I still think they made the right decision despite the way they went about it was all wrong, but they made the right decision and it seems to be paying off. Would you agree with that? Net net, it's still something they probably had to do. I think we agree the methodology that seems to have come out in the journal article about it when, you know, with ultimately has now resulted in Chris Nolan becoming effectively a free agent. Not what you want. Yeah, yeah. Not ideal. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. getting to a place of pushing your schedule to the streaming service faster clearly has had an impact. And you're starting to see some content that is drawing attention. You know, we, we don't we don't talk about Tom and Jerry because it's not really in our genre, but mm -hmm. Tom and Jerry is the biggest kind of post pandemic release box office weekend there's been. Yeah. So what you're telling me is that a movie that was available on HBO Max the same day that it was put out is actually the movie that did the biggest box at the US since COVID really kind of shut things down. That to me is a validation of the strategy. It yeah. says, yeah, like it can be available to certain people at home and it's not necessarily going to pre preclude people going to the theater if they really want to see it. Yeah. So you layer that with you know, Tom and Jerry is great, but Tom and Jerry don't compare to the Snyder Cut. It doesn't compare to Kong versus Godzilla. It doesn't compare to Suicide Squad in terms of stature. So all of a sudden now, maybe we're starting to see some content, some better, bigger content coming down the pike. 
as they're going global as well. We should talk about that. They've, they're mentioning 60 countries they want to get into this year, which is huge for the service. Yeah. yeah. I think whatever numbers or trajectory they're laying out, I'm taking the over. Certainly by the time we exit this year, they're going to have more people in, on the service than, than they expect right now. And that's going to put them in a much better place. I, you know, they're not, they're never going to be Disney plus because they don't have the same IP, but they're never going to be Netflix because they don't have the same scale. Yeah. But if they can get above the numbers they're talking, they will be a player. Like that's enough to be in the game. Yeah. And, and as you said in the past, um, it's all about the content. If the content is good, people are going to, yeah, they're going to pay the money in order to see that. And what they've done is put out content. I mean, we still waiting for certain stuff to come out. Kong versus uh, Godzilla, Godzilla versus Kong, uh, Mortal Kombat. There's, there's a bunch of stuff that, that's coming out that people are going to pay to see, you know, and, 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 I, and I'm pretty sure they're going to continue on that path of producing, producing the best possible content in order to get the people to subscribe to their service because it only makes sense. Um, let's segue also into, uh, you know, AMC disclosing the money that they lost. It's not surprising, right? Um, every industry in within their uh, you know in any company within their respective industry has reported lost right not every but you know a lot and perhaps and i think we've talked about this about this in the past perhaps not this year possibly not even next year maybe next year who knows but um it's going to take some time for them to to reach those numbers again to get to get i guess back to normal and we also said that if you want people to come back with a vengeance and really come back to the theaters to 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 get that movie experience we also have to innovate and make that experience different than what we've seen in the past um we also have to think about this because this the studios Disney, you know, Warner Brothers and others have some leverage. Do they reach the numbers that they did before if they're not getting the same sort of package that they used to in the past? It's a tough call. So, I mean, they, you know, they reported a loss. I think it was 4.6 billion for 2020. The good news is they got, they said publicly, they have enough cash to last this year on into next year. So that's the good news is that you, they survived what should be the worst of the pandemic effect. And they now have enough cash on hand to move forward. Now, the, to your point, the question becomes, what are you doing with that cash? Is that cash purely survival mode, bare minimum cash? Or is that cash you can actually put to work on the offensive to improve the theatrical experience in some way so that when people are really coming back in force in major cities there's something a little neater for them to come back to so we'll see what that looks like but i think that's the challenge before them so you're uh, when it comes to the leverage in the negotiation they're clearly going to lose ground because the theatrical world as we've talked about many times is increasingly concentrating into this blockbuster set it doesn't have to be comic books, but it's event films yeah. with larger budgets. And the studios hold the cards on that. But as I've said, the, the, the flip side to what's going on for the theaters is you should have more premieres. Like that's the way you can make back some of the lost revenue. So you, so you concede, I don't have the 90 days anymore. You can see that it's going to the streaming service faster. Maybe it's not Warner Brothers fast, but it's going there within 30 days. But I'm getting new content and the content I'm getting is more in the money making genre. I'm not yeah. putting two screens for a rom com or two screens for a $40 million thriller like and I, I hate to say it because I feel like there's validity to those movies, but those movies are going straight to streaming. So yeah. what you're getting is 
superhero films. What you're getting is Chris Nolan films. What you're getting is Godzilla versus Kong. What you're getting is Mortal Kombat. Like, and all you're looking for is a hit rate and a buzz that gets people to keep coming back. Yeah. And if you and they're gonna that, have that, even if you make it right, even if you're making 10% less on your take in each of these agreements, yeah. but if you get more opening weekends that are good, yeah, I don't know. You you might be able to move through that in yeah. a way that's pretty comparable to where you were before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you think about uh, the movie theater experience. Does it have to upgrade? Does it? Ha are you fine with it being same old experience that you had before? Or are you looking for something different when you decide to go back? Let us know in the comment section below. Uh, the Flash film has an update. They uh, they just casted. Um, what's her name? Uh, let me. Let me get it up here. Well, it's uh, like, it's it's an update. One parent is in, one parent is out. I, That's yeah, a, yeah. the update. <laughs> so we have uh, Maribel Verdu has joined the cast of Andy Muschietti's Flash movie and Warner Brothers picture. Barry Allen's father is no longer in the film due to scheduling. I mean, this is I would I would think the Flash is a big film that you wouldn't want to miss being in, but whatever, right? He's not going to be in the film. I'm still not high on the film because if you've been watching the show, I'm not a big fan of Ezra Miller's performance as or characterization of the Flash character. Brian, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on on the Flash movie and its potential. Because I don't, I don't know if we've ever gotten into a deeper discussion about um, this movie. Also, I want to just just say to you guys, you know, the inclusion of of of, uh, of this actress's uh, uh, portrayal of uh, Barry Allen's mother, um, Nora Allen. Obviously, they're doing the Flashpoint she's going to have a, a, a bigger role in this. Definitely, we're going to see the surprise of, of Barry seeing his mother and certainly the sad part at the end when he has to leave that reality or that uh, that future or past or whatever um, to go back to his um, original place and time. So what do you think, Brian, about this Flash movie? First off, I'm a little confused because the Barry Allen mythology, both parents are central to that mythology. So I'm a little perplexed as to how you can just easily have one and not the other. So Nora Allen is a must have because her death under mysterious circumstances, basically it winds up being a catalyst for sort of Barry's later life. But we know that Henry Allen is in jail and a lot of times in the comics, he's usually in jail because he's suspected to have been the murderer. Yeah. And we know that he's usually been framed by Zoom or some, you know, super powered time traveling enemy. And so one of the main themes winds up being Barry going on this quest to kind of exonerate his father and or stumbling onto the truth that then exonerates his father. So we saw in the Justice League film Henry Allen is in prison. So he is where kind of where he's supposed to be in the DC universe. Yeah. So I am a little confused at how you can just X out his part entirely, unless this movie is just not going to deal with that trauma and that sort of family dynamic, which would in and of itself be kind of an interesting choice. So that's my like number one when I read this casting news. The second thing is the cynic in me says, how the heck does Billy Crudup know what? if he has a scheduling conflict, because this movie, what's, when is it going to get made? It might get made 10 years from now. For that's all what, we know. that's so, what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so he's like, I already got a scheduling conflict. I'm like, are you sure you have a scheduling conflict? <laughs> like, I, I'm not totally convinced on that one. So that's my second point. The third is, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not a huge Ezra Miller fan either in terms of his interpretation of this character. I'm probably not as down on it as you are. I'm more down on this film because I think they're asking too much of it. I think they're cramming so much reset, overlay, fixing of the Snyderverse and, and sort of setting up all these new directions. 
I think it's just impossible for one two and a half hour movie to pull that off in a way that we don't walk out of the theater feeling like something was forced, cut short, or just left hanging in a way that's yeah. unsatisfactory. So even with a decent filmmaker and some, you know, bringing back guys like Michael Keaton, like that's awesome, but just feels like a really heavy, overpacked effort they're going for here. Yeah, I would have been more interested in, in the Batman being Jeffrey Dean Morgan uh, as the Batman in that film. I don't know. But that exactly. would have been a validation of Snyderverse. That's the problem. They're trying yeah. to reset that and move away from it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I don't. I, I, but it's weird. Like in the Flashpoint movie, in the in the in the animated film, we didn't really get to see uh, Barry Allen's pops in that one. I don't think they even no, mentioned true. it, right? Right? No, that's true. So let's see, man. Let's see what this... Uh, let's see how this turns out, man. If they, They're they supposed to be shooting next month in England. Um, so let's see, man. I, this, it seems like this is going to happen. Everyone is going to be the Flash. I'm not too high on it. Uh I'm not really too high on anything DC unless it's the Batman. Uh, I think one of the other challenges with this and Suicide is, Squad. Yeah, I was gonna say I think one of the other interesting challenges with this visually is I think next week we are going to get a very fully realized visualization of the Speed Force. Yes, that's been teased in the trailers. Yes, and I do think it's a little bit odd that you're going to have the same lead actor with another director's full vision of what the flash effects are going to look like. I don't yeah. think they're going to look the same as what Zach's doing. And I don't think the studio wants it to look the same. So it's going to be a little bit jarring, honestly, to see Ezra Miller in a new flash suit doing new flash effects right after we kind of have, are going to get whatever version um, Zack Snyder is going to show us this week. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind and yeah. see how they navigate that. Yeah, it'll definitely, I think, be different. And I'm, I'm hoping that it is. I'm hoping that I, I, I get on board with Ezra Miller's A Good Flash. Right now, I think he isn't. I think most people think he isn't. Um, I hope Andy, Andy Muschietti tells him, listen, I don't need you to run this way. I want you to run this way. <laughs> That's what I want to see. So let's see. What t Tell us what you think in the comment section below about the Flash film. Are you excited to see it? um let us know in the comment section below so the dc uh wants to introduce i believe it's films and not necessarily shows of two characters satana and batgirl batgirl was originally supposed to be done by josh reading but we all know where that went and satana um is something new that they want to do uh i'm not entirely excited about this reason being is because I don't know where this is leading towards. I'm spoiled. I like the universe part of this whole thing. I don't, I'm not too keen on the, the standalone situation. Although I am when it comes to the Batman, because as long as you make the Batman look dope or Batman look dope, I'm cool with it. Right, and it's, as long as you give it those Batman moments, those that dialogue, his uh, his impressive fighting skills, his detective skills, as long as you give me that, I'm happy with the Batman. Um, but with Satana and Batgirl, is Batgirl in a universe where Batman doesn't exist, or if he is, what who is this Batman, or how did this all come? How does this all come about? Right? Are we gonna see Batman in this film? You know, those these are some of the things that I that I worry about. That doesn't get me entirely too excited. I'm gonna watch it because I'm a superhero film genre fan, but I'm not entirely excited about it. What do you think, bro? Okay, so let me give you a couple of takes on this. One is I feel like you earn the right to make shows about characters like this by getting your main characters right. So when I think about how Marvel came at this, and Marvel, when they started, as we've talked about many times, didn't have control over the 
probably the most famous elements of their catalog. They didn't own Spider-Man. They didn't have the X-Men. So they worked with Avengers. That's what they had. This would be like the equivalent of putting Guardians of the Galaxy out in 2009. Mm -hmm. they, they hadn't earned the credibility for us to trust them with to do something characters like we didn't know much about. So they did Iron Man. They did Cap. They did Thor. They did Hulk. They did names that at least people had some connection to. And then they stuck the landing with Avengers and they said, Let's okay, for our next trick, we're gonna do Ant-Man and Guardians. And now because you trust us with the first set of films, you will come watch this if the buzz is decent. DC doesn't have that first stage locked in. That's the problem. And if they were operating with a very strong Superman franchise, if they were operating with the Chris Nolan trilogy still going, I, I think yeah. Matt Reeves will be fine, but if they were operating with that still going, if they had, if Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern had been good, if those mm -hmm. things were true, we look at these shows and movies differently because we say, okay, they gave us five, six, seven really quality films and tone, and these characters may be cameoed or teased in that, and now we're going to get the story of those characters. Great, all for it. To me, I don't necessarily, I can't, I have a tough time buying into this. Yeah. if I don't feel like the rest of the house is really on on a sound foundation. So that's sort of my number one problem. Now, the exception I would make to that rule is, you know, if Steven Spielberg walks into the office and says, I have a great idea for Batgirl, okay, I'll write you a check. You can go make Batgirl. But that's not what's happening here. Mm -hmm. So right, if, if a certain filmmaker says, I just have this character I really like and I want to make it special, yeah, you write that check. But if it's not that, this is way too early, in my opinion, yeah. to really nail this. And I almost feel like it's a disservice to the characters because even if it's good, I almost feel like the audience may not find these products the way they would if everything else surrounding the DC universe was in good shape. Are uh, these films you think are... Uh movies being made to replace the Wonder Woman franchise, so to speak, or that female heroine that they, they're they going to be lacking? Because we don't know if Gal Gadot is going to come for a third one, regardless of what is being said. Uh, do you think that's coming into play somewhat? Um, I don't know that it's the Wonder Woman replacement angle, because I, <laughs> contrary to your best efforts, I do think Gal's going to do one more of these because mm -hmm. the money's too big. But I do think you hit on something, which I, I, I do think DC is reaching for representation across their characters. And there's a dearth of female characters, strong female characters. So I do think they're probably going quicker into the catalog to, to get this. Maybe to say like, hey, look, we've got three, four shows that are you know, have a female lead or, or what have you. So I, that probably is a factor here, whether we want to admit it or not. It probably is a factor. I hope it's not the primary reason. I hope the primary reason is they have a good idea yeah. for a good a good product, but I'm sure it's has something to do with it. Yeah. You know what I just, uh, the, the thought just ran across my head as we was discussing about uh, the female superheroes. I'm guessing that if you, I know you saw, um, Flashpoint um, uh, animated film. We all know that Supergirl has been cast for that film, correct? Yep. I think she takes the place of Superman, uh, of a Superman character that was in the original uh, Flashpoint animated uh, movie, and perhaps a story. Who knows? That could be. And, and she and she's replacing that, uh, and she's replacing Superman. I, I could very well be. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it is, man. Let's see. Let us know in the, in the comment section below. Um, I, I left the link in the uh, in the description below because they have a bunch of stuff coming out. Blue Beetle, and I think we discussed that prior uh, in, in previous episodes. They have a bunch of stuff coming out. Static Shock, which we're, I think we're looking forward to, and Michael B. Jordan is attached to uh, producing that as well. So let us know in the comment section below what do you think about Satana and Soup and Batgirl. 
uh, coming to the DC Universe, I believe as films on HBO Max or shows. I'm not quite certain yet. I don't know if they're certain yet. To be quite honest, that could be made. That could be made later. I mean, if they could. They're going to film enough material to where if they want to make it a limited series, they might be able to do it. You know, yeah. I, I actually think we'll talk about Snyder Cut later. But I mean, to the extent that this works. Don't rule out that format being used again, that idea of, you know, a three or four hour, something too long for a theater, but kind of a little shorter than you're used to for TV. Yeah. I think it's all on the table. Yeah. Um, yeah, let, know, let us know in the comment section below. Not later, Brian, right now. Zack Snyder's Justice League comes out next week. Four hours, and we've gotten some reviews already and the reviews seem to be very positive which i think we've spoken about uh in the past this being a better version than what was released in 2000, 2017 you know this is you know we knew this was going to be the case um <laughs> What do you think, Brian, about the, do you think, because the reviews seem to be like, this is like fantastic. DC fans have been waiting. This is the movie that DC fans have been waiting for. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure about that until I see it. I mean, not to, you know, this could well, very well be the case, but I haven't liked, I haven't been overly excited about anything that's been done at DC other than some Batman films. What is your take on this? Well, first off, these are reactions, not reviews. This okay. is the lifting of the social media. Well, it's an important distinction because typically if you go back through the history of these types of films and you look at the kind of the average score, if you will, of reactions, those tend to be incredibly high and don't necessarily tell you what sort of the average score from the critics is going to be because the audience that tends to tweet about this tends to be the audience that's a little closer to the genre yeah. the ones that tend to want to root for these and, and support these so you tend to get more I mean Wonder Woman 84 had extremely positive reactions before the review embargo was lifted mm -hmm. uh, I mean versus Superman actually had very positive reactions uh, before the review embargo was lifted. So it's a very hard to tell. Sometimes it does equate to very strong overall critical buzz. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. So it's hard to tell. Now, yeah. when I look at the comments, I'm encouraged by a couple of things. One is there is a consistency to, and you would hope with four hours, this would be true, character development. There yeah. does seem to be a consensus that the characters feel more fully realized and the team up feels more genuine. Yes. Perfect. That actually is a very good positive. Mm -hmm. Ray Fisher, our odds on betting favorite to win our Snyder Cut Oscar next. Yeah. He is pretty much the only actor who is mentioned in any of these reactions and everyone seems to love what he's doing. So perfect. And we've been talking about this for a minute that Cyborg was going to be the best thing about this uh, Snyder Cut. Go ahead. So I think those two things I actually buy into because they make a lot of sense and it is a filmmaker's unified vision. So I'm excited to see all that. I haven't heard anyone tip anything about really the action or the resolution or the cliffhanger or some of the stuff that's been teased. So all of that seemingly is not in any of these reactions. And so I'm kind of curious to see where that where that leads. But yeah. look, I, I mean, we're rooting for it. Like, I, I hope it is every bit as good as these reactions. I would, I would be head over heels happy if I flip on my service on March 18th and two hours in, I'm like, holy <laughs> S-H-I-T, he pulled this off and this yeah. is amazing. I hope that's my reaction. I'm skeptical, like I, you know, but I hope that's my reaction. So, you know, if nothing else, I think it does sound like, you know, and I know, I think we, we've talked about this. It is a material step up from the theatrical, which isn't really saying a whole lot, but you know, it does sound like it is worth it. And yeah, look, from an event perspective, I know he's hosting a watch party. 
which I think would be pretty awesome. And I suppose yeah. some of the cast is going to participate in that. That's what I've heard, which answers one of my questions yeah. as to why they weren't really part of the promotional process. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I'm super excited. And I try not to use these to really change my ball. That's no, kind of no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys already know how I feel about this. Uh, I'm gonna watch it. I just want to see how different this is gonna be. I'm I'm also in the same boat as in that I want this to be great. I'm just hoping that we don't get any more after this. But we'll see. Uh, I want to before we get into the confirmation of the rumor that's been circling for quite some time. I want to get into an article that that you sent to me, Brian, about uh, Zack Snyder. Um, describing the differences he sees between Marvel and DC. I want to quote this article from superhero hype, uh, Tudor Lente, I believe is the, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name. He is the one that wrote the article. Um, and these are some of the quotes that I found interesting. When I, I believe they asked him, you know, how would uh, let me see, uh, and Snyder is doing his best to promote his upcoming, including offering some suggestions for the reviews to come. I quote, it's like the Irishman, but with action. Um, you could say that you can say that that's a fine review. You could also say this one was like, I'm hoping that he's kidding. You could also say it's the Godfather. And I've seen that movie probably over a hundred times, maybe, <laughs> but if you know, the Godfather is, is, is art. He says this it's the Godfather of superhero films. That's another fine review end quote. He also goes into, um, talking about what's the difference between, uh, you know, Marvel and, and how, and how they do things. He says, um, I knew before BBS when we made Man of Steel, he explained Marvel is doing something else. They're doing at the highest level, this popular action comedy with a heart. Okay. And they have nailed it. An effort to duplicate it that is insanity because they're so good at it. It's like, it reminds me of three o'clock high when Buddy Ravel says to uh, whatever his name, I forget his name. He says, he didn't even try. He didn't even try. What DC had was mythology at an epic level and we were going to take them on this amazing journey. Frankly, I was the only one saying that. It's obvious I take these characters and their mythology really serious. I want them to be fully realized as characters existing in that world. I don't think that it's cool to have fun at their expense. And there was a vision that we had, a complete universe fully fleshed out that we really wanted to take all the way. Brian, <clears throat> this sort of thing drives me crazy when someone is saying something that they believe wholeheartedly that they're doing is the best thing that they've ever done with these characters and to me it's not the case we're not saying do what marvel is doing with respect to their formula and how they tell these stories we're saying or i'm saying at least take the stories that have been fantastic in the comics and bring those stories to life you have an abundance of stories that you can do not take pieces of each one and put them together that's my problem. And making these characters, in my opinion, unrecognizable other than the suits that they wear. I don't, this is the, this is the problem. I want Zach to win, but he ain't winning in my view because of what he's done with these characters. It's all about what he wants, in my opinion. What are your thoughts on this? 
What did I ever do to deserve this treatment from you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> can't do it the way Marlon did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm make off, we can't refuse. Um, well, first off, I didn't really like the Irishman that much. I think it's kind of meh. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I hope it's not the Irishman. Um, I certainly hope it is the Godfather. Uh, but uh, yeah. I think the, the my issues with the comment are a little more nuanced. So one is, I think there's some revisionist history here. Let's call it a spade a spade. WB had the Chris Nolan Batman franchise working. They wanted more of that mm -hmm. somehow, some way. Yeah. And Chris Nolan and Christian Bale weren't going to give it to him. They were done. Yeah. So the studio's mistake, in my opinion, because at that time we had gotten the first Avengers film, The Dark Knight Rises, landed, was they said, we want to take the gritty realism and spirit of those three movies. And we want to just blanket that across the characters. And that predates that mm. coming in. So I think whatever else they say today, I will never believe anything other than what I just said, which is mm. they had three things that worked that were dark, gritty, and real. And they said, we can just do dark, gritty, and real. Yeah. And that fits with what Zach's saying about Marvel because Marvel wasn't doing dark, yeah. gritty, and real. So then we get, you know, Zach comes in with Man of Steel and makes these comments to, and I agree with you in the sense of the mistake is thinking that it's one size fits all. And that was, so if I assume it was a studio mistake to start and Zach leaned into that with his own nature, which is he tends to be gritty, real, dark, you know, visually stunning, but that does fit his DNA. Yeah. I think it led us to a place where we're taking some characters who are not that in the comics and we're turning them into that to fit this worldview. And I think if you go back to the DC animated series, part of what makes it great is they're able to balance the characters that are different. The Justice League animated, the Justice League Unlimited series, Flash is a goofy dude. Yeah. But it works alongside the really curmudgeonly grouchy Batman. Yeah. Superman is very much a Boy Scout. Yeah. And it, they make that contrast a strength of that show, not a weakness. And you see it in the animated films. You know, it's funny. I was I was rewatching just randomly, stumbled across it online. Was um, Superman, Batman, Apocalypse the other day? I was just rewatching that show. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. I was like, oh, I forgot which one? Because there was. were two, wasn't it? Two of them. No, yeah. So this is. I just I stumbled in and I, I jumped in at the part where he's at the or Dark Side's at the farm, ambushes Clark, okay. and oh, yeah, 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 and they, okay. you know, it's an epic, epic fight scene. Um, yes, yes, but. Same idea, like Superman and Batman in that film work together, even though they're diametrically opposed from a personality and tone standpoint. And so I think that's the thing that's always bothered me with this is it never had to be a single palette. Yeah. That's a choice. Yeah. And I think it was a choice that didn't honor the essence of all of these characters. And honestly, it's part of why I think people gravitated Wonder Woman because that was the first film that really wasn't that and yeah, I, yeah. I don't think Wonder Woman is a pantheon film but I think because it came out of this universe where everything was being shoehorned into this one direction it really stood out yeah, 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 yeah. as being something a little different and yeah. by the way Wonder Woman is not a comedy yeah. like to what Zach's saying that is not a Marvel film it's a mm. different kind of film yeah but they, but Patty Jenkins did figure out this way to make it a little bit more optimistic and tonally different than some of the other DC universe. So I just hope going forward, you know, if, if nothing else coming out of Flashpoint, that they establish that there's a range to play in. And it doesn't always have to be what the Chris Nolan trilogy created. So that's my rant on that. No, and, and you're absolutely right. I agree with you 100% in terms of 
you know, the, the characters and, and this tone that was thought to be the answer to what they wanted to, or how they wanted to be different from Marvel. And it just didn't work. Some people liked it, majority of people didn't. And it shows, I have evidence for you. <laughs> you know? Good numbers. Exactly. And numbers, what's the, what's the, what's the saying? Numbers don't lie. Oh, you know, you can like it. It's cool. You like it. That's fine. But if I'm a business, I want to do the best I possibly can to get more people to come in and see my stuff. It's not just about what you like. It's what it's about what everybody sort of, sort of likes, right? They're not going to get everybody. Not everybody likes Marvel. But the majority does. Why? Hear the numbers. <laughs> so I think the other thing too is when you look at the opening weekend for Man of Steel, 128 million. When you look at the opening weekend of BBS, 166 million, it tells you that people really want it. Of course. To buy in. Those of are course. big opening weekends. Of course. So when those movies end up with final box, 668, 800 million plus, what that tells you is word of mouth was whack. A percentage of people walked out of the theaters saying, I really wanted to buy into that, and it left me a little cold. That's yeah. kind of what that says to you. And that has doomed the longevity of this path in the yeah. end. So we'll see yeah. where we go from here. But to your point about numbers, that's that's it. Yeah, yeah. Let us know what you think. I know everybody's excited about seeing um, Zack Snyder's, uh, uh, the Zack Snyder Justice League cut uh, coming out next week. I'm certainly excited. I want to see this movie. Oh, yeah. I want to see how different this is. And uh, I'm ho I'm hopefully, uh, I'm hopeful that I come out enjoying this film. There was one trailer that just came out where it shows uh, uh, Darkseid using his Omega beams that look kind of dope. But one thing doesn't necessarily make everything great, you know? So you're going to have these little pieces of, of, of great stuff like Batman versus Superman, that warehouse scene with Batman fighting. That was amazing to me. But the rest of it, nah. You know, yeah, so... I mean, I I think, well, first off, I mean, we, we obviously have talked about our Snyder Cut Oscars. I think those are coming together pretty nicely. Yes, yes. I'll call one shot. I think I think one of the, I think when we're done with these four hours, one of the five best sequences we've ever seen in a comic book adaptation will be in this film. I don't know where it'll be. I think there'll be one, at least one sequence, to your point, about Omega Beams or Superman and the Black Suit. I think there'll that be, be one like, oh, sequence. Snap. Yeah, yeah, there'll yeah. be at least one sequence where you look back on that and you go to YouTube years from now and you just keep rewatching those yeah. three minutes and you're like, this this was pretty odd. I think that will be in here. So yeah. don't know where it is, but I think it'll be in here. Let us know in the comment section below what you think uh, uh, about uh, our discussion. You, let us know if you disagree or agree. Let us know. Give us some real, don't just say we suck that we don't know what we're talking about and then leave. Tell us exactly what you defend your position. We've defended ours for months now since we started this show. And you, if you've been watching this show, hopefully you have, you know where we stand. Um, and I, I, I just want to really understand other people who really think this is, you know, something uh, amazing. I, I want to understand let's that point of view. Yeah, let's okay. take it a step further. So let's go back to numbers. So the, the two most successful entries in the DC universe globally are Aquaman, a very quirky, very colorful, very bright, light, lighter toned film, quite honestly, mm -hmm. and original Wonder Woman, which is not light, I would say, but is kind of has an optimistic tone to it. So if you're commenting on this, those numbers don't lie either. So there's almost two billion a box in those two origin films. Mm -hmm. If you're DC and you're Warner Brothers, how do you marry that with the best of what we're going to get in the Snyder Cut? And, you know, maybe the Batman, which does look like it's going to be very dark. How do you take those and put them together for the future in a way that gives everyone what they want, which is yeah. amazing realization of these characters? Because that's, 
That's the reality, right? That's the reality. Because if Batman is what you say it is, and it does one, you know, 1.8 million of global <laughs> box, you're going to have that as the dark entrant, and you're going to have these other films as the light entrant. You got to figure out a way to put that. Yeah, together. I mean, it, I, see, the thing is about, I don't want WB to make the mistake, oh, the Batman did 1.5 or 1 1.8, whatever numbers it, it does, and apply that to Superman in oh. terms of what the film is supposed to be. That's not what we're talking about here. That's not what it's supposed to be. So they have to be, there has to be some smart guys and, 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 and see what works for this character. It doesn't necessarily is gonna work for this character. And that's, and if, it, and if they do that, it's simply saying to us that you guys don't understand who these characters are. Right. And it's upsetting because you're looking at it at, from a money perspective. And looking to apply the same formula to this, not knowing that th it doesn't apply. And then it, it tanks. And then you got these factions of people who do enjoy the movie. And it, and it's like, it, it creates it creates a lot of drama, unnecessary drama in my opinion. Well, it's a short-sighted money decision because as we saw, the box office petered out with these films. So, and by the way, what, what I'm talking about, if you are able to marry the styles effectively, that will be different than Marvel. Yeah. Because Marvel, as we've said, their challenge has been now trying to branch out from that style. Yeah. And I know your confirmation is actually the perfect example of taking something very dark and putting it with something that's been very light. And we're hoping it turns out to be something very great, but it is going to be interesting. So thank you for the segue. Yep. We have confirmation from a reliable source. I'm not going to say who it is because I'm not blowing anybody up, but I have been told for a fact the rumor that Charlie Cox is going to be in Spider Man as their devil is in fact happening. Charlie Cox will be their devil in Spider Man 3. Now, this news needs me to believe that it gives me hope in this sense. We're not going to get all the hoopla that people have been um, clamoring over that we're going to be getting a Spider-Verse or Multiverse situation happening here. Charlie Cox, his cameo, I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to be like a cameo cameo. I think he's going to have probably 15, 20 minutes, who knows, in the courtroom doing his thing. We may not see him in, in, in in the movie as Daredevil. Who knows? It would be dope if we did, but let's see. It. But it certainly lends itself to there is an issue that Spider-Man or Peter Parker has to resolve first. There's a bigger thing happening and not the Spider-Verse. This these things may be going on in the background. We may get hints of it, but it's not going to be the movie that people are going crazy. Oh, Toby Maguire is going to be it. Uh uh, was it Oscar, uh, was it Alfred Molina, Jamie Foxx, all these other people, because it sounds crazy to me that all these people are going to be, be in this one film. It doesn't make sense. It sounds crazy. So I think we're, we're eventually going to lead towards that path. Perhaps Toby, uh, not Toby, um, what's this guy's name? Tom Holland is going to take a break. And we're going to get these other things happening in other films that puts all that stuff together. Tom Holland makes it come back and we get this multiverse. What are your thoughts on the confirmation that Daredevil, Charlie Cox, is going to be in this film? My number one thought is the fans win again. Yeah. Because this was a great interpretation of the character. The show was fantastic. And Marvel listened. Marvel listened when the rights reverted back and they had control. They were patient. They didn't recast when they didn't need to. They played the long game and now they have Charlie Cox back. Look, I mean, if you saw the stinger at the end of Far From Home, Spider-Man needs a lawyer. <laughs> he needs a lawyer now. He's about to get a lot of trouble yeah, publicly exactly, with exactly. Mr. Jameson, right? So that that actually fits a lot easier into the storyline. And, you know, New York and where Matt Murdock you know, operates is is central to Spider-Man's story as well, right? Because he's from one of the five boroughs. So 
it all fits. It's yeah. great. I'm glad they're not deviating from it. I hope that Charlie Fox is allowed to realize the character pretty much the same way he did, he did by the end of season three. It was a pretty well thought out and executed version of it. Yeah. I don't care if we get him in the suit or not, to be quite honest. I mean, there's plenty of material in this movie with or without and we know what he can do right it's one of those weird things where like we've seen his action capabilities we don't need to be proven that already yeah, so yeah, i'm content exactly. to wait for it the only thing i'm waiting for now is tom holland to say this is the best <laughs> courtroom scene that's ever been filmed in the history of hollywood because you know that that's coming <laughs> what's that movie uh with with uh tom cruise and... a few good men yeah a few good men there's the best courtroom uh scene since that movie it's like come on tom chill man listen i can't wait to see this this is one of the most like i can't wait to see that scene i can't wait to see it because we didn't get too much of him being uh in the courtroom and uh, you know other than him defending the punisher right right uh -huh. yeah. um so this was gonna this is gonna probably be another scene where he's talking to the jury or the judge or whatever and we're gonna see his defense and it's gonna be and it's gonna be dope i think uh to see peter just sitting there scared out of his mind and this dude is doing his thing and i wouldn't mind him seeing the scene where he goes to look out go look for information as their devil that would be dope to see anyway that's our show for today Thank you for joining us once again. Brian, any last words? I mean, it feels like we've been building to this moment for years because we literally have. So the Snyder Cut is going to be here. Yeah. So hope everyone tunes in for our Snyder Cut Oscars. And again, I think I don't want people to get confused. This is not us making fun of the movie. This is us being big fans of the genre. I think when you see the awards and the way we're going to lay it out, you will yeah. clearly get the gist of what we're doing, which is there'll be some, some good some not so good, some fun, some very serious. I think we'll have a wide range of notes that we're going to take, but we do want to do something a little different than just sort of a scene by scene breakdown because yeah. we're just not going to be the best equipped to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I think also, like, even though we're getting Falcon and Winter Soldier, we'll probably do something separate with that because yeah. that's going to be its own its own discussion. So, yeah, so much material. So and much. And then we still got Invincible like a week later. Yeah. <laughs> and news that comes out, you know. And gonna, Godzilla vs. Kong is yeah, a week it's after a, that. A bunch, so. It was a bunch. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for joining us once again. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button, that notification bell. Please share it with your friends, people who like the to, the discussion and like to talk about this stuff. And we, we really would like your support in that. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.